Hello, my name is Mariana Simeone. I am the representative of the government of Quebec here in Italy. And I'm so glad you could join us for what I hope will be a stimulating talk on Quebec and its scientific diplomacy. As we live a global health pandemic, the likes of which we've never experienced, we realize how science is shaping our daily lives like never before. Science is playing a major role in guiding the decisions of our government. Science is advising our public agencies and science is determining where we work, how our children study and learn, how and when we will travel again. And when governments decide to shut down their borders and implement their own health policies, the role of diplomacy becomes ever more important, if not crucial. To discuss, therefore, the role of scientific diplomacy during these trying times, and to look more specifically at the approach Quebec has fostered in its very own scientific diplomacy, we are joined today by the chief scientist of Quebec, Professor Rémi Quirion. In his capacity of chief scientist, Professor Quirion advises the Minister of Economy and Innovation of Quebec. As well, he runs the three research funding agencies of the government, whose yearly combined budgets represent close to a quarter of a billion dollars. Professor Quirion is an eminent scholar and one of the most extensively cited neuroscientists in the world. Welcome, Professor Quirion, and thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Well, it's a great, uh, great pleasure to be with you uh, today, and hopefully we'll have an exciting uh, discussion. Thank you. I'm sure we will. So tell us, Professor Quirion, how did Quebec deal with the COVID-19 health crisis and how prominent was the role of science in the political decisions that were taken? Well, science have never been as much on the forefront of the agenda every day in the news. And the premier of Quebec uh, all the time was accompanied by the head of uh, public health agency in, uh, in Quebec. Myself, in my role, I was very, very closely affiliated with the Ministry of Health and um, uh, Social Affairs, exchanging on science, information, scientific information, and how scientific information was, should shape decision, political decision. Of course, one of the challenges that we were building uh, the plane at the same time as the plane was flying, knowing very little about the virus and having to advise government on on scientific data that were not necessarily uh, complete. But I think overall, uh, in spite of a lot of cases, for example, in Montreal uh, during the first wave of the pandemic, I think we did uh, relatively well. And uh, science was always a key element. And the premier of Quebec was always mentioning the decision today is based on scientific information is based on the recommendation from the public health agency of Quebec. So uh, very, very much at the forefront, scientific uh, scientists all over the province were involved, many of them in the news all the time, and they did well and I'm very proud of what they did to explain to the public uh, the pandemic, what we knew about the pandemic, what we did not know, and talking about the scientific method, not necessarily the, the, the data of the day, but the scientific method. So overall, I think uh, we uh, were able to um, inform the public and also link with the rest of the world, because of course, it's a global pandemic and what the country decide has an impact on the others. So scientific and scientific diplomacy was really crit critical in, uh, in the time of uh, the first wave of the pandemic. And still today, more in the second wave, we need to look at each other compare what Italy is doing, for example, with what Quebec and the rest of Canada is doing. And uh, we have a key role as scientists to play uh, in that regard. So tell me, uh, Professor Quirion, how about the public? How did they react? What was, how did the public op opinion change vis-a-vis, -vis, and here I'll activate my camera again, yes, how did the public opinion change vis-a-vis -vis science, vis-a-vis -vis the role of science in society throughout, throughout the pandemic? You must have been able to see on the ground how the opinion was shaping. A great question. And uh, it just happened that we had a kind of a survey that we did last December. The public opinion in Quebec about science and various aspects of science. So we had the data before the beginning of the pandemic. Then we did a second survey in June. Uh, and uh, we were uh, surprised and positively surprised by the fact that uh, science was still seen as a key 
in terms of ways to make sure that we'll be able at some point to get out of the pandemic. So uh, still a lot of support for science, for scientists uh, in the, the public in, in, in Quebec. So that's uh, reassuring because in some other part of the world, uh, it changed, it changed a, bit, a bit more than that. But I'm happy to see that in Italy, the same as in, as in Quebec, in a sense, uh, science is very prominent and uh, the society citizen say, well, we have to base our decision on science, even if we know that scientific information, scientific data are still not 100% uh, uh, safe, sure, uh, because we're still learning about the virus and about the pandemic. So science very much at the forefront uh, still today, and we are trying to find better ways to engage uh, our citizen into science and scientific methods. And for example, in Quebec, the research fund, we have started various program on that we call engaging the public and dialogue with the public as ways maybe to inform a citizen about scientific data, scientific information in Quebec and in the rest of the world. That sounds very exciting. And, and I imagine uh, more so for, for the young people that are approaching university studies, they'll have this experience too to go forward to study and, and they'll be more attracted to science. That, that's very, very interesting. And that is very much Professor Kilion because you are engaging. And now I'd like to get away from the pandemic for a second. And I'd like to speak to you about scientific diplomacy. Now, you've been an impassioned promoter of Quebec scientific <laughs> for as long as I can remember. Uh, in fact, in fact, your efforts have been recognized by France. You were the recipient of a very prestigious award for the relations you built scientifically between those two countries. So, you have to tell us, why are you so keen on building relations internationally in science? Well, uh, science is global by, by its nature. So, of course, uh, scientists uh, have always collaborating between, uh, between each other, different, different countries. So that's the way we do business in science. In addition to that, uh, Quebec uh, is relatively small in terms of population. It's a small population, so to increase the impact of what our scientific community is doing, we are trying to develop more and more scientific collaboration and scientific diplomacy. One example here is a partnership that we have uh, developed with Palestine. So basically uh, building bridges between scientists in Palestine and scientists in Quebec. So having exchange, Palestinian coming to, uh, to Quebec to, uh, to do research work. So we hope to be able to build on that model and science is not based on nation. So it's open to everyone and the scientists exchange not on their political views, but on data, on research data. And that's what we want to build on. We want to help our government by doing science diplomacy to open door, science open door globally and one of the best examples is in Geneva at CERNs. Uh, when you talk about the egg boson, it, all nationality work hand in hand to discover these new particles. And I think uh, we need to use more scientific approach to help diplomacy uh, globally. Indeed, and science can also help the economy. Now here in, uh, in Europe, everyone is busy, every country is busy putting together a recovery package for you know, the economy, which is going to be not easy next year. How, yeah, how will science contribute to Quebec's economic recovery, according to your opinion? I think uh, science and innovation is the way out of the, of the pandemic. So, for example, discovering vaccine. Well, so certainly we need to continue to invest in science and very heavily in science and research. And we have worked hard with... Uh, the Fonds de Recherche du Québec, with the leader in, in Quebec, uh, CEO of uh, large companies like Large Bank, uh, Hydro-Québec as well. And may, so we work together. To, okay, how can we make a strong case to our government that investing in research and innovation is the key to the economic, economic recovery? And I must say that we are very pleased that we, the minister and uh, uh, leader of our government are very open to uh, the argument that we have put forward. And we really hope that there will be strong investment 
continued investment in research and innovation in over the next uh, couple of years in uh, by the Quebec government in um, in their next uh, budget. Of course, challenging uh, because uh, there is so many other demand uh, and in their hand, but uh, we are confident that we'll continue to invest in research in, in Quebec. Well, that sounds very promising. Thank you so much for this most interesting exchange, Professor Kirion. Best of wishes in your work for the rest of the year, and we hope to see you very soon in Italy. Thank you very much, and looking forward to see you again in, uh, in Italy. Thank you. Thank you.